Hey gang, Matt the Helpful Homeless Inspector here. Thanks for tuning in. Um, today we're here to talk to you a little bit about lead water pipes. We're gonna get a little bit into the history, we're gonna talk about where the problem came from, what causes the problem, and a little bit about what we can do about the problem in the meantime. This does affect approximately 10 million Americans, so it's kind of a big deal. Let's get into this. Lead pipes have been used for a very, very long time, back to Roman times, all right? So they've been used for a very, very long time, and in general, a pretty good plumbing system, okay? They were malleable, they were easy to use, there was readily material that was readily available. Um, it could be easily um, installed and adjusted and added to and taken away from and all this kinds of stuff, uh, you know, very versatile material. However, um, in uh, our history, we used them and we have had periods of time where the health um, effects of lead exposure were made aware. So in the late 1800s, we were made aware that there was some potential lead issues um, with uh, consumption of lead, exposure to lead, those types of things. Um, and it wasn't uh, until what, the 1970s, 1978, that they banned lead paint, all right? So pa lead uh, paint was uh, heavily used in the United States and uh, was basically, if you are buying a house that's newer than 1978, almost guarantee you, you have lead at some layer of that paint. That house may have been painted 20 times, you know, but you're, one of those, two of those layers, three of those layers, maybe even 10 or half of those layers are going to contain lead-based paint at some level. Hence, you're gonna get a lead-based paint, lead paint disclosure that will kind of uh, say, hey, I'm not aware of any lead in the home. There may be lead in the home because of its age and stuff like that. It'll say stuff like, don't eat any paint chips and things like that. Um, the, the, the paint chips thing is a thing for children and for pets and stuff. Um, but for us as adults, um, the biggest thing with lead-based paint is that the lead-based paint can give off a dust during remodeling. And if you breathe that lead dust into your lungs, then you're getting that consumption and you're gonna be exposed to high levels of lead. So when you're doing construction projects in an older home, very important that you have good ventilation get some sort of a negative air pressure system that's going to vent uh, the, the stuff, get some sort of a HEPA filter system set up, wear a respirator and stuff, you know, and wear safety goggles instead of safety glasses. You don't want to get that lead dust in your eyes either, okay? Um, it's uh, really easy to take some of these precautions, but it's surprising how many people just skip all those steps. Um, so making sure that you're taking precautions when you're doing remodeling projects will help cut down on the exposure from lead dust. So as we began to understand the science behind um, the consumption of lead, okay, um, it really started to become a, a scientific hot point in the mid 80s. And actually in 1986, the United States banned the use of lead in potable water systems. Now potable water just means the water that we drink, consume, the water that comes out of our shower heads and our faucets and things like that. Um, and so in 1986, they weren't able to use any more lead pipes. They weren't able to use any lead based solder. All of those things were, for all intents and purposes, outlawed, okay? Um, and that is in residential systems. Now, lead-based piping or lead-based uh, solders and things like that are still used in some very regulated commercial settings, um, but they're not used in general in your residential home at all anymore because of these um, changes that Congress made in 1986. Now, the the whole lead water pipe thing um, kind of got tabled, and, and people just were ignoring um, the fact that we had lead based pipes in our homes, that we had lead-based uh, water laterals and things like that, that we had city mains that were made of lead, okay? These were on a back burner per se until 2014 when Flint, Michigan started to have some lead-based water issues. Now the thing with Flint, Michigan, and the, the reason that they had a problem with their lead water lateral system and their lead piping system was that they were on the Detroit municipal water system. And the city of Flint wanted to switch to a different system, but the different system wasn't going to be ready for a couple of years. So as a temporary patch to the, the situation was that they were going to um, basically uh, supply the water to the municipal water system through the Flint River. Now the Flint River has a different salination or different uh, um, salt content and things than the Detroit municipal water system had, okay? They didn't wanna buy their water from Detroit anymore. They wanted to be more self-sufficient. So they basically are drawing this water from the river and the river had some contaminants in it. It had other types of problems. It had a different salination level. and then that different salination level ultimately ended up chewing away at this silica layer that builds up on the inside of the pipe. Water was chewing away at this silica layer. They also were finding high levels of bacteria. The people's water was coming out brown. It was just a, 
whole big mess. And these people could not consume their water in Flint, Michigan for a very long time. And what ultimately ended up happening was um, when Flint switched over to the uh, the Flint River, they didn't put any anti-corrosion materials into the water system. They basically said, we're going to wait a while and see if we need to add that or not. Well, they really should have added that. But then what ended up happening was they exacerbated the problem by adding chlorine to the system. Um, and the chlorine just corroded the pipe even further um, because the chlorine started to deteriorate this, what, what, what little silica layer was there, it started to deteriorate it even further. As a result, now we have straight lead on water contact and all that water rushing over that lead is, is grabbing all these molecules and bringing um, excess amounts of lead into the people's homes. But the bottom line is that that Flint, Michigan brought this lead lateral water, lead water lateral issue to the forefront and made it um, a topic now for every city across the United States. Now, as far as lead in your water goes, the only way to know if you have a problem is through testing, testing of the water um, and water system to make sure that you're not getting high levels of lead in your uh, water system. Now, the EPA and stuff for a long time, they said there's acceptable levels of lead. Hence that funny commercial, you know, where the people are like, uh, this one has, uh, this one's from Chicago and this has a, uh, an acceptable amount of lead. This one has an acceptable amount of lead as well. And this one has no lead. Which would you choose? And they're all like, of course, I take the one without the lead in it, right? Duh. But ultimately, there really is no safe level of lead that should be in your water. All right. So get your water tested. If you do have some lead water laterals, you have lead pipes in your home. Um, even if you just have old copper fixtures that were used with uh, uh, lead soldering and stuff, it's a good idea to get your home tested to find out what the level of lead in your water is. Okay, because lead can be very harmful. Now, as far as um, lead poisoning goes, okay, which is what they generally would say if you're contaminated uh, with lead in your body and stuff, you're, le you're, you're having lead poisoning, all right? This lead poisoning um, can lead to a lot of different issues. Um, but the thing with the, the symptoms is it's very hard to notice. It's not like you're going to get an outward rash. You're not like you're going to uh, get night sweats. It's not like you're going to have something is going to scream at us saying, hey, I, you have lead poisoning. You know, it's not like, you know, when you get diabetes and you start having to go to the bathroom all the time. It's not like that. It's going to be uh, subtle things that um, basically will take these three or four different subtle things that are happening and your doctor should be able to say, hey, this could be lead poisoning. We need to do test your blood or whatever, you know, test your blood or tissue and stuff is really the only way to know if you've got lead poisoning. But these symptoms could be anywhere from uh, reproductive issues. So in, an, in a, an adult, you may have low sperm counts. You may have low, produ low production of, of your eggs and, and stuff, stuff like that. You may have other types of reproductive issues as far as your ability to um, reproduce. Um, but it also in an adult, what it could result in mood changes, it could result in headaches, it could result in um, lots of different um, uh, psychosomatic problems with your brain. Lead is seen to dramatically affect the brain a lot, okay? Um, but uh, these headaches, these mood disorders, all that kind of stuff is what would be in an adult generally. In a child, you're going to notice uh, slow growth rate. You're going to see attention issues. You're going to see lowered IQ um, and, and those types of things, all right? But um, it's Learn a lot about it. If you start to think you might be having some symptoms and things like that, get your get your doctor and get tested. Um, if you have lead in your home and you've been exposed to it for a long time and you weren't aware of it, I would go to the doctor and, and ask him if there's any potential that I may be suffering from lead poisoning. You want to make sure that you're safe, all right? And uh, if a doctor visit is all that it takes, hey, cool. Then that's the easy peasy way to get her taken care of, okay? Uh, but you want to make sure that you and your family are safe. Now, um, with that being said, about all the harmful things with lead and stuff, know that most lead pipes in homes, okay, um, do not represent um, a, a high level of lead in your water. And this is because of a silica layer that builds up on the inside. Kind of hinted to that a little bit when we were talking about Flint, Michigan. But this silica layer builds up on the inside of the pipe, okay, it kind of lines the pipe, and it creates a barrier between the water that's flowing through the pipe and the pipe itself. Now, this makes it so that the water does not come in contact with lead directly. And that's where it would pick up the molecules and things that would go along with that lead, all right? Now, as far as these silica layers go, municipalities have been aware for a very long time that these silica layers help to um, prevent lead in water, and they've been doing things to prevent 
that led contact in water for a very long time. And it's not something that is a, uh, a newfound thing, okay? Um, however, those efforts have been stepped up since the Flint, Michigan thing started to occur. Municipalities were much more aware that they could do things to help make sure that the lead content in the water going through those pipes is less or negligible, okay? The things that they would do in order to prevent lead contamination to the water is they would add different types of phosphates. So orthophosphate and polyphosphate are two things that they can put into the, an additive that they can put into the municipal water system. And these phosphates um, are, are safe. They're safe. Uh, the FEA says they're safe. The government says they're safe. They've been uh, scientifically tested for a long time. But ultimately, these phosphates affect us in no way, shape, or form, okay, as far as um, safety and health-wise goes, all right? But what they do affect us by is making our pipes safe, all right? And if a municipality can add those things, additives to the pipes to make the pipes safe, that's a good thing, okay? Now, one of the things municipalities also can do is try to reduce the pH of the water, okay? And by reducing the pH of the water, the acidity of the water, um, it can um, basically allow that silica layer to grow and make the water a little bit more safe, all right. Now, the cities also realize that by adding a slight electrical current to that uh, pipe will also help to produce that uh, silica layer um, as it as it to like the growth of it to make it larger, larger, thicker. You know, so that there's a greater barrier there and less of a likelihood that the water is going to be exposed directly to that lead. All right. Now, as far as these um, uh, silica layers go, they can be deteriorated quickly by if one Flint, Michigan, put the chlorine in the water that deteriorates the silica layer quickly. Having running water that has a high salinity or helps high salt content will delete that will help uh, erase that that silica layer. Okay, um, so uh, it's very important that the the water be managed properly. Um, in most municipalities, most city water um, systems, there is going to be a requirement that they put out a, a report every month that is going to um, talk about the uh, the the actions that they're taking to reduce lead in the lead contact with water. That it's going to talk about the the clarity of the water. It's going to talk about the safety of the water. It's going to talk about what they, they, the, the, the comprehensive water test to determine what exactly is being contained in the water, whether they're bringing it up from deep wells or where they're getting it for water from. But ultimately, that report is going to be available to you, the citizen, and you can go and get that lo usually lo at your local municipality, or you might be able to even find it online. Now, one of the things that has been going on is there's been a lot of uh, movement towards municipalities and the government helping with this process, okay, and making it cheaper for the homeowners that do have to deal with this problem. And as far as that goes, every municipality has a different plan. The government um, and uh, the President Biden and their administration recently released some money. Um, I think the United, the United States got a, a large sum, sum of money, but here in Wisconsin, um, they dropped $14 million, I believe, in our pockets, and the, then the state legislature has to decide how how it gets spent and where it gets dispersed to um, in order to get those lead water laterals replaced. Now, this does not mean that your lead water lateral, what lead water lateral, pardon me, is going to be replaced at no cost to you. It just means that it might be a little bit cheaper, okay? Um, and you may not bear the full cost of that. But the thing is, you're going to have to have yours done at the time that the city main is replaced down the street so that when that line gets replaced down the street, all the houses that branch off of that will be done at the same time. And that's the most cost-effective way to do that type of a project otherwise it's very expensive and if you do let's say you replace to, to go negotiate or you go to replace your lead water lateral that still leaves you with the city main as a problem because the city main is going to be filled with lead as well um so it's best basically to uh, get your water tested um and while you wait to get your lead water lead, lead water lateral replaced use filtration use bottled water those types of things using lead ba lead uh based um pipes and stuff can get corroded and can result in these high levels and the only way like i said to know is through testing all right as far as lead in the water goes, all right, what we're looking at is something that is a problem for consumption. So lead that we're going to be consuming is a problem. If we're just using it for bathing, washing our hands, those types of things, lead in your water and the percentage of lead in your water is not a problem. It is not going to uh, generally um, leach into your skin or cause any types of those issues that, that are caused by lead consumption, okay? So if we eat lead, breathe lead in, consume lead through water, drinking, those are the ways that you're going to consume lead in which it becomes a problem for us, all right? But um, as general uh, general rule, basically, um, wait to have that lateral replaced until the city is going to be doing the main in your street um, and just be prepared for those costs. Keep, in, uh, keep uh, advised as to what the situation is going on in your municipality as far as what those um, plans or the progression of those plans is going to be.
When it comes to lead water ladles, the quickest and easiest and cheapest fix is filtration. And filter filtering the water will definitely reduce your lead level down to a safe level for consumption purposes. Now you can use a number of different types of filters. Uh, you can use an inline filter, which is one that would be put on the the, um, the pipe of your home. Uh, and that would basically filter all water through the house. Um, and there's different qualities of filters. Um, but definitely having it on uh, uh, the kitchen sink would be a good idea. Um, Lots of times you can do it through the refrigerator. You can put a little filter, like one of those pure fill water filters right on your faucet um, that would do the job as far as uh, the filtration from the water that would come through the faucet. But lots of different options there. Another one as far as filtration goes would be a reverse osmosis system. Now reverse osmosis water is one step away from distilled. It's very, very clean water, definitely would reduce the lead level down for you. And reverse osmosis systems can be installed for your, in your home for anywhere from, you know, uh, 800 bucks to $2,500, depending on the uh, type size and quality of the unit that you're getting installed. All right, um, so get your water tested, use filters where necessary, don't tr consume any uh, water that has lead content in it, and uh, just be safe out there about how you're going about your things in your home. All right, have a great day, and again, this is Matt, the Helpful Home Inspector. If you like this kind of content and you wanna check us out more, we do have a number of videos on YouTube that you can go and check out and learn about more about your home and how to take care of your home. And remember, the better you take care of it, the better it will take care of you. Thank you very much for viewing this. Have a great day. <laughs>